As part of a miniseries type of thing, I thought I would discuss three possible scenarios how this conflict could end. The one we will be discussing in this video will be a Ukrainian victory. For this scenario to be possible, two major factors are required in my opinion. A. The West has to keep sending a lot of aid and resources to Ukraine so that they materially can keep the fight going. And B. The Russian people sides against the Russian government in this conflict. I would say C. The Ukrainian people resist the Russian occupation, but that seems to be going on to an even further extent than we at anticipated was possible prior to the conflict. So, yeah. Major protests across Rus Russian cities turn into civil unrest, forcing Putin to divert attention from the war in Ukraine to the home front. And by now he no longer controls all parts of the Russian society. And so with a second Russian civil war in the making and with basically the entire world united against him, Putin loses heart and interest in continuing the, the struggle and steps down, giving the power to his intended successor, Mikhail Mishustin, who in turn is forced to step down shortly after due to increased protests thus ruining the last hopes for a post-Putin-Putinism in Russia. The war in Ukraine has by this point turned decisively in Ukraine's favor. Russian soldiers are deserting en masse and back home Alexei Navalny wins the newly organized free and fair presidential election in Russia, promising to make peace with Ukraine and the West and to democratize the country. As part of the peace terms, Crimea and Donbass are obviously returned to Ukraine, who by now have joined both the EU and NATO. Russia is forced to pay enormous amounts in war reparations, crippling their economy even further. To mitigate this, Navalny allows increased Western influence over Russian institutions to ensure the continuation of democracy and to combat corruption. This, of course, does not sit well with a large portion of the Russian population, who views Navalny as a Western puppet and the man who made Russia lose the war. Having lost faith in Moscow, the Siberian independence movement becomes increasingly popular in the long term, backed by China, and we might see a third Chechen war resulting in the independence of Chechnya, as Moscow is simply done with war for the foreseeable future. Without Russia backing the Assad regime in Syria, the civil war might flare up again, and Moldova having realized the Achilles heel that Transnistria is or could become, annexes the breakaway state with Western help, and might soon vote to unite with Romania. Belarus would of course also see a democratic revolution. As a result of this Ukrainian victory, Russia has lost its position as a key player on the global stage. The people have lost faith in their nation's autonomous destiny and are now heavily divided. Some want to join the democratic West, some favor the powerful China, some look back at Putin with nostalgia because at least under him Russia was still powerful. And of course the many minorities are starting to ask themselves why should we not seek independence? Why do we have to stay under Russia? Once peace is established, the West will have to handle Russia very, very carefully and make sure not to overly capitalize on its defeat. As though currently down on its knees, they know a wounded bear is far more dangerous than a content, calm, sleeping bear and especially if that bear happens to have nukes. No one in the right mind who knows anything about world history will ever want to risk a full-on war with Russia. Thus, making peace, helping Russia back up and ideally integrating it into the West in the long term will be the new policy of the West. This of course provided that Russia stays democratic and peaceful the question is, will they?